I'm gonna explain you the, how the Enmos transistor works. This is a 3D view of the Enmos transistor. We have a width and we have a length. As an electrical engineer, what you want to do is play with the width. So you can get different currents or um, different, depending on your circuit, you might want to change the width. We're gonna have a source right here. The source is just this terminal right here that is connected to a piece of metal. This metal and uh, modern MOSFETs are fabricated with polycyclicum. We also have a gate right here that is connected to the metal. We have a drain. And as you can see right here, this white piece right here is an insulator. It's an oxide, silicon oxide. This is to prevent from all the electrons going through the p-type substrate, which is the body right here. Because this is going to be heavily dealt with positive charges. This is going to be the source region right here. It's going to be heavily doped with negative charges. We're going to have a channel region where all the electrodes are going to accumulate. We have bulk right here. And we have a drain region, which is also heavily doped with negative charges. So what happens, this is a front view of the NMOS transistor. What happens when you don't apply any voltage to neither the gate the drain or the source. What you're going to have is that you're going to have two back-to-back -back diodes right here, as you can see right here, between the D region and the P-type substrate, and between the S region and the P-type substrate. You're not going to have conduction, and nothing is going to happen. So let's apply a small voltage on the gate. What's going to happen is it's going to fill this up with uh, positive charges. They're not going to go through the, the, the insulator that is right here. And you have positive charges right here and negative charges in the p-type p -type substrate. What it's going to do is going to it's going to push these charges all the way to the bottom of the p-type substrate. It's going to attract the negative charges. We can see in this uh, animation. It's going to attract all the negative charges. But you also have negative charges on the uh, S region right here and on the D region, which are going to be attracted to. The transistor will be on once you reach a specific voltage. That, um, once once you attract all this electron, this is going to create a depletion region, which is going to be populated by the bound negative charge associated with the acceptor atom. So all this right here is a depletion region. So in order to turn on the transistor, you have to apply a BGS that has to be greater than a specific voltage, which is called the threshold voltage. So you have to accumulate enough uh, positive charges right here so that you can attract as many negative charges. Once you reach uh, the minimum threshold voltage, then the transistor is going to start conducting, and you're going to have a flow of electrons. So let's say we apply a small BDS. This is what's going to happen. You're going to have a conduction from the source to the drain of the current of the negative charges. You still have a, you're still going to have a depletion region right here. And the threshold voltage usually varies from 0.3 volts to 1 volt. So that's what happens when you apply a voltage, a small voltage on BDS and you have a volt, uh, BGS uh, gate voltage greater than the threshold voltage. So if we, if, we, if we compare ID versus BDS, this is what we're going to have. We're going to have uh, a straight line right here, but it bends because the channel resistance increases with BDS. So basically, you're going to be on triad region, which is this, this is what it's called, triad region. When your BDS is less than your BGS minus your BP, because there's a voltage drop right here. And in order to find the, the current, this is the equation that you can use. Mu and cos times WL, W over L, BGS minus BT, BDS minus one half BDS squared. This is gonna give given by the manufacturer or whoever the sign of the transistor. BGS is going to be the voltage difference between this and this. And your BDS is the difference voltage between this point and this point right here. So 
that's how the current is going to flow with a low voltage on BDS. Now let's see we apply, uh, we increase the voltage on BDS. What's going to happen is that uh, you're going to start going to saturation. And you're going to create a pinch of right here. This pinch of is going to limit the current that is going to go through the transistor. So you can't increase the current anymore. You're going to be saturated. As you can see, you're going to have, in an ideal transistor, you're going to have a straight line. Because the current is just limited. You can just go beyond that. That's an ideal transistor. And how are you on saturation? That's when your BDS is greater than BGS minus BT. So uh, no matter how much voltage you put, BDS is not, it's not gonna have an effect on the channel. As you can see right here, it's just gonna be a straight line. But that's only on an ideal transistor, not on a real transistor. And in order to find the current, you have to uh, use this equation right here. 